Hello everybody, Chatty CRC back with you. Welcome back to the channel, and this is going to be a continuation of the Nano Goblin build, but more importantly, a look at iNav 1.9 configuration using the configurator 1.9.2. Now, I have flown this configuration on two airplanes, the Nano Goblin and a ready-made RC Recruit, which is also kind of uh, I'm an, an AR stealth wing I think is what they call it and also kind of like an S800 reptile so a lot of this stuff is kind of the same that you see on YouTube but the reason why I wanted to make this is when I was doing my builds I watched a lot of different videos that are out there and everybody is using different boards and stuff like the omnibus and this and that and also a lot of people are sticking with 1.7 1.8 iNav because they're not uh, comfortable uh, upgrading you know it's not like beta flight if it's not broke don't fix it there's really not super added features I think the biggest feature we got in 1.9 maybe was like waypoint missions which I haven't tested yet so um, I'm gonna cut this video up into try to cut it up into like logical parts and timelines so for those of you that don't, don't want to watch the whole video I'll stick those down in the uh, stick those time frames down in the description and then also if you have any questions about the build check out the playlist or just go ahead send me a message or whatever i'll put a link to the playlist of the get nano goblin build up here in the corner and then there should be some other stuff on the channel about the s800 build or uh sorry recruit uh build but i'm going to go ahead and do a little series on that too because it's a very very popular wing and it's a very good price so take a look here real quick we got the nano goblin everybody knows about that it's right there looking good all that kind of stuff and so let's hook this up to inav and let's just kind of start from the beginning So I am using a CL Racing F4 Air V2 board. So it's been flashed with its own target and with the 1.9 firmware. And we are all connected up to iNav. Now the first thing that you're going to see when you connect to iNav if you've never used it before is you'll see a multi-rotor. Um, when you go from setup into the calibration and the presets this is where you're going to select whether you're going to be doing a plane or a multi-rotor now most of us are with flying wings are either using the 600 or the z84 i really haven't found much difference between the two the pid values are different of course on both of them but i have been playing with my own pid values and everything like that as well so First thing we're going to do is look at the calibration tab. Calibration tab is a little bit better now because it actually steps you uh, step by step through how to actually calibrate the board. You see how the board, it says to have the board um, regular, upside down, point to the right, up this way, that way, everything like that. It has been debated on whether or not you need to set your board orientation first in the configurator right here versus go ahead and ahead and calibrating it and then setting it so it's kind of hit and miss some people say to do it one way some people say to do it the other way luckily for me for me both of mine are pointing forwards so i don't have to worry about that but that is something to consider when you're doing the calibration tab Go ahead and calibrate everything, and you should see these numbers change. If they all are the same, then that means that the calibration process failed, and you need to do it again. Presets, again, this is going to be your preset filters and PID values for your gains and for whatever kind of device that you're, or ship that you're building, whether it be um multi-rotor or a wing or an airplane with a rudder and everything else ports tab of course 
A lot of this stuff looks familiar if you're used to Betaflight. So pretty much everything is the same. You're going to need to identify your UARTs on your board and wire things up in the correct order where they need to go. You can see I have Serial RX for Crossfire on UR2 with the CL Racing board. I have GPS wired up to UR6 at the regular standard speed because INAV will automatically configure all that stuff. And I also have Smart Audio running as well that works in the OSD, uh, which is really great and something that I don't, I've never seen someone show. So I'm definitely going to show you that at some point. The configuration tab, this is where things get fun. This is where you set up what kind of device that you're actually going to be doing. We're doing a flying wing. Now with... Uh, Airplanes and wings, even though this flight controller has like a barometer and stuff built into it, uh, they want all that stuff turned off. The only thing we're dealing with is the accelerometer. And here in board and sensor alignment, this actually comes into whenever you are calibrating for your level mode flights. So I did a video on this previously that showed how when I switched into horizon or angle mode that my ship would dip a little bit so what I needed to do even though my board looked like it is flat it's actually pitched a little bit differently inside there combine that with a, maybe a little bit of an air from this calibration and that's why I had to go in here and adjust it up a little bit and also just the roll axis a touch so that way everything would fly straight and level course this is your receiver mode and what you're using GPS is easy you just turn it on U blocks auto detect that's all good got my name in there ESC's depending upon what kind of ESC you're using I'm using more of a multi rotor type of ESC just running multi shot um, the refresh rate I've tried playing around with it depends on your ESC what it likes uh, servos most servos these days are pretty fast so 160 Hertz seems to work better than the default and I also have, uh, you have to click on enable motor output to even get things to work. So make sure you turn that on. And I don't like my motor spinning as soon as I click an arm switch. So I've done that. I've went in and calibrated my min throttle just kind of like we had to do on quads and stuff before D-Shot. Haven't changed anything here at all. Battery voltage is all going to be the same. We want to do monitor it. I have my minimum cell voltage. I'm actually going to turn that down a little bit because this is running a lithium ion pack. So I don't have to really worry about it as much. It's going to start at 3S and run to 2S. Um, so every time you're done with something, of course, you want to click save and reboot. Now I have noticed that the configurator and everything could be a little bit buggy. So make sure you're always keeping an eye up here and making sure you're getting things to actually save and reboot uh, before you move on. Sometimes you'll have to either plug or unplug and reset stuff. So keep an eye on that. Um, bail safe, I have set up just the standard. I am doing return to home without landing or anything else and there's always the save and reboot down here pid tuning these are the current pid values that i am running and i need to play with my rolls and uh, rates and everything like that i fly in manual mode most of the time so the pids really doesn't don't matter a whole lot but roll rates and expo and all that stuff does uh, the pids are kind of something that are a work in progress i started from rc groups and i'm kind of working on them myself and all we're really looking at is the rolling pitch and the actual uh, level because we don't have y'all. And I haven't touched anything with uh, filters or nothing like that at all. Okay, advanced tuning. Now, advanced tuning... I haven't touched any of this stuff because I think this is all for multi-rotors. 
I haven't seen any YouTube video where anybody has changed any of that at all or touched it, so I basically have skipped that. Um, return to home and landing settings. This is where things get a little bit different compared to what you might have seen on YouTube from some people. A lot of these used to be CLI commands, and they've moved them over to the GUI now, so it makes things a little bit easier. So you can set your altitude, what you want it to do, never land, and then of course set all of your different thresholds and speeds and all kinds of stuff like that if you want to mess around with that stuff. Now, I for some reason, somebody might look at this and might be able to tell me why, but you have different modes here for return to home. You have the fixed mode, which means that it'll only return to home at a certain altitude. You have the at least, which basically means it will only um, return to home if it is at a certain altitude. If it's higher, it doesn't matter. It will still come home. Uh, you have max, extra, where you can add in some extra uh, climb rate before it comes home. But I've only got the current to work. So... When I go out and fly and I want to initiate a return to home, basically with current, it's just going to turn around and come back at its current altitude and then it's going to loiter, which is fine with me, uh, but I fly relatively flat country here in Ohio, but if you are in you know hilly areas or the mountains or something like that, this is something that you really want to check out and nobody has really been able to give me an answer why my aircrafts are doing the doing what they are doing in the other modes in the other modes different flight controllers same firmwares you know with 1.9 or whatever anytime I would initiate a return to home above the altitude the set altitude below the set altitude whatever it would basically just start to nosedive to the right and some kind of sometimes search and wander and everything like it didn't know where it was going um, current is the only way I have been able to successfully get it to return to home so it will turn around and fly right back to the home point and then of course loiter around at a predefined loiter distance I did make some changes over here to the fixed wing settings as far as the different throttles uh, my minimum, my cruise, my max, and the different bank angles and everything like that. So yeah, that's the fixed wing settings that I'm using here on the Nano Goblin and on the S800 uh, Recruit. They're really not a whole lot different. So we'll move on to the receivers tab. And I pretty much have everything set up for Crossfire Micro. So I have my RSSI coming in. And I've got like 11 or 12, I um, think I'm using like 11 of the 12 channels uh, for different modes and switches and everything. And I've changed my Expos a little bit, left the dead bands the same on iNav. You do have a manual Expo and you have an RC Expo. RC is for the Expo that you have in your leveling modes. And manual is the Expo that you have, of course, in your manual mode, which is just the gyro. No... Uh, stabilization or nothing like that at all so these are still a work in progress um, I think my recruit definitely flies a little bit better uh, with these uh, type of settings I'm still trying to find the right stuff for the goblin as far as uh, rates versus expo type of uh, thing uh, if we look at modes modes really isn't that different than what people have set up um, individually I have experimented with a few of them. Altitude hold works great. Uh, the heading hold, I can't get, I'm still working on that, trying to figure that out and see how that all goes, but that's not working uh, uh, correctly. Uh, return home, I've already went over that. I got it working, but it should work differently. Manual mode, of course, is what I'm flying in all the, all the time. Uh, servo auto trim is just a huge help because what you need to do is have that set up on a switch at least for maybe indefinitely because if you bump around your wing in your car or something like that you might throw your servos out of trim or bend a wing tip or something so I have that just on a switch up out of the way so if I notice that things aren't flying correctly in manual mode I can 
basically flip this switch and fly the aircraft straight and then it's going to save those servo positions which are right here in the motors tab you can see right here servos um, three and four well that's not right I don't know why it says three and four because or four and five are changed because I'm using three or four so that's kind of weird but anyway we'll go back and take a look at that later and that's pretty much it I tried auto-tune didn't really like auto-tune didn't do a whole lot for me and I haven't been doing anything with camera controls uh, adjustments tab I haven't used anything in the adjustments tab uh, servos this is where you do change your uh, rates actually there it is it is uh, right here so these are my new mid servos after using the servo auto trim to keep everything flying straight this over here is servo three and four which if we go back to the configuration and look three is going to be on the left if the wing is pointing that way and four is on the right so more than likely what you're going to have to do is you are going to have to set one to negative and one to positive and these are usually at 100 for full deflection and you're going to want to change the percentage uh, based on how much servo travel you want in your elevons or ailerons or whatever based on your manufacturer's recommendations so i think these are okay for me right now i might adjust them down a little bit more or up but these seem to be working pretty good uh the more the less travel that they have of course the less expo you're going to need and the different kind of rates you're going to need so they all kind of work together so that way you can get the smoothest flight and then again this right here is after doing the servo auto trim and this is what keeps everything flying straight and nice and level in manual flight and it also is what allows me to take off uh, correctly um, with very little uh, reflex on the goblin I do have uh, probably oh I'd say maybe four to six millimeters of reflex in both of the elevons on the flying wing to help get things up in the air GPS of course nothing really big here as long as you have your GPS wired up correctly and everything you'll see that you're getting messages coming through I'm in a basement right now so I'm not going to get any satellites at all and I don't have a battery hooked up either but it's still flashing and all that kind of stuff mission control this is where you do your waypoint missions and all that kind of stuff which I haven't actually got into yet motors this is where you are going to calibrate your ESC and you are also going to test your motor and make sure that it is working in the proper direction for you always make sure your props are off of course and click this over here and then run your motor up and down make sure everything's good OSD this of course is where we set everything up that we want in our OSD so we can have an awesome in cockpit experience I got a lot of stuff turned on it's super fun I love looking at all the telemetry data and all that stuff coming back it's really great uh, they have a font manager here these this used to lock up and hang up and everything there's no problem with that now 1.9 if you click on this and change your font to bold or whatever it works fine no problems um, I'm not doing anything with LEDs or censored or logging or black box even though you could use all that stuff if you wanted to um, in the CLI there is some CLI commands that you still are going to want to enter that I have entered so it looks like they have edited this a little bit and if you look they have things updated six days ago and just kind of looking through here and everything it's basically just how to kind of set everything up your controller and all that kind of stuff uh, to make sure to do your direction changes as we went over before and then for some reason even though they could make default values that are these 
they put in default values and then they want you to replace the default values and I'm not sure why so I do have um, these inclination um, changes set so I put these into the CLI I have done the set to small angle so I can arm at any uh, position uh, this right here does not work anymore because off is not there it's never and it's in the GUI um, same thing with this right here you see this is all 1.7 1 1.7 1 1.6 and 1.7 none of this stuff has been changed or updated at all which is why I'm trying to make these videos um, I did enter this even though this is like kind of like air mode so I don't think that you need this but I put it in there anyway um, uh, let's see fail safe procedures return to home that's in the GUI already um, you get down to these optional things it uh, tells you how to tune your PIF controller but this is 1.6 and now they have auto tune and it doesn't really say anything in here about using the auto tune feature um, so that's not in, in there and it gives you some different actual pitch and rate values to start with compared to defaults so you can kind of play around with those if you want to um, but I'm just using pretty much what was ever on there so I guess down here it does say to play with autotune so I mean all this stuff is pretty much the important part that you have to think about make sure everything's working good and everything on the bench before you go out make sure when you push your control stick to the right that your elvon the correct elvon is going up and down and same thing you know if you go down and up and then do a manual flight and trim everything out with the servo auto trim that works really well if it's totally out of whack then you might mechanically want to trim that uh, but you can see mine was just a little bit off so it's not enough to worry about I'm just leaving those settings and everything's flying really good so after you get that done then you want to fly in a horizon mode and make sure that things aren't happening like it's not climbing on its own or going to the left or going to the right or going down or whatever if it does then you're going to have to go back to that board alignment tab that we were talking about and change those values and then of course it says to test all the features that you have had enabled maybe the first feature that you're going to enable and that's it is return to home and fail safe I mean quite honestly both of my airplanes fly so good that I can fly pretty much sticks uh, hands off the sticks and I'll maintain I'll maintain altitude in manual and in uh, horizon mode now if I get pushed by some wind it's going to be a problem but any other way it's not everything flies really good um, they also talk about like using an OSD, a minimum OSD and everything, which they actually have an OSD now. So you can see that this stuff is just really weird and hasn't been updated. And the community, honestly, the INAV community has not been super responsive. I've had to go to like other communities to get answers on INAV, which has been great. A lot of information on like the S800 group on Facebook a lot of information in the long-range hooligans and really just a bunch of like crap answers coming from the INAV uh, Facebook group so uh, I don't know where the developers hide maybe on slack I think I've tried a couple things on slack as well but you know there's nothing there even though they say you know they have uh, live slack support if you disconnect here you'll see you know you can join the slack and you can go on to RC groups. I haven't done RC groups yet, though. RC groups is usually pretty good as well. So, but that's what you want to check out. That's what's going through as far as configuration and what's working for me. And I'll be back to update as much as I can when maybe I make changes or things like that. I really want to like try to do some videos with some rate changes and everything like that. There is a really awesome um, OSD built into iNav that nobody's showed. I think I'll make a video and show that. So you can actually change your PIDs and change a lot of parameters inside the OSD. 
So the first couple times you go to the field, you're going to need to have your laptop or some kind of device with you in order to tune things like your board alignments and change maybe your modes on your uh, receiver uh, tabs and everything like that for your radios. But once you get everything kind of like dialed in and everything, you really don't need to you take a laptop with you. Uh, you can do pretty much everything through that actual menu, which is pretty handy. So, but you got to get through all this first. So anyway, guys, so, sorry for the long video. I tried to make it as concise and short as possible. Um, but, you know, it's just a big topic and a big important thing to, to, to check out. So have fun. Everything works great. I'm using, like I said, a, a sail racing F4S here. I got a Betaflight F3 quad board in there. All these planes are pretty much running quad parts or smaller, so there's nothing like super fancy about either of them, and they both fly awesome. So I'm very impressed with some aspects of iNav. Uh, for others, I'm not. I have flown an Eagle Tree Vector before, and I still feel the Vector is just super superior, but do I feel that it's worth $250? I don't think so. A fifty, the forty to fifty dollar flight controller and a twenty to thirty dollar GPS will get you pretty much everything else that you need, which is what that I have in iNav. And if you go through various cheaper websites or you can get cheaper flight controllers and GPSs, you can actually get in for a lot cheaper than that as well. So that's gonna do it. Talk to you later.